reading to you from the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Let's begin reading with the 14th verse. For it is light that makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, <clears throat> making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. <clears throat> and as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Well, <clears throat> one year later, God called me to preach. Well, I've been blessed to be able to preach halfway around the world in Japan and, and uh, in Alaska, Mexico, the Caribbean. I've been on radio for over 40 years. And I've been privileged to speak on a lot of TV programs, the 700 Club and other places. Now, that was a blessing of the Lord. I didn't earn it. He, he let me do it. But I think the greatest joy I've ever had is going to prison. Of course, the greatest joy that any Christian has is introducing a soul to Christ. Listen, kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour you a glass of ice to your lemonade. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, will you turn with me to the 51st chapter of Psalms? And let's read the 12th verse. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Well, friends, one doesn't have to. If you've ever read much about in the Bible or anybody about David, you'll find out David was a great man, a man after God's own heart. God loved David. Well, God loves you too, but he loved David. And David became a great man and a great leader and a great uh, general and army. They were whipping the enemy and just going great guns. And one night David got tired and he decided he wouldn't go into battle. So he sent one of his uh, lesser leaders out to lead the army. Well, he went up on his uh, roof to pray or meditate or whatever he was doing up there. But when he got up on that roof, he looked over across and he saw this beautiful naked woman took a bath. Well, he got a hold of her, and the next thing we know, they committed adultery. Well, and she become pregnant. And so uh, David, he had to cover his sin somehow, so... He called for her husband to come back that night to stay with his wife, but instead he got drunk and sat outside of the room and never slept with his wife. So David was in real, real filled with fear. So he had sent his her uh, husband out into battle, the front line. And he got killed. Well, David tried to cover that sin, but friends, let me tell you what: you cannot cover your sin, no matter what you do. You cannot. You cannot hide from God. Well, David tried it. He tried to hide his sin. Well, the next thing you know, David's heart is broken. God's Holy Spirit won't let you alone. If you really are born again, and if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living within your body in the temple. And you do something wrong, God's just going to keep pecking at you, keep pecking at you, keep... Why? Because he wants you to turn your back from that old way of life. He wants you to confess your sins so that he might forgive them and you go on with your life. Well, so here's the confession of David. Lord, restore to me the joy of, of your salvation. Now, friends, <clears throat> there's those uh, who believe that you can lose your salvation. And they're good people, a lot of them. Sure enough. But friends... If you know Jesus, you can't lose it. 
He said, no man shall pluck thee out of my hand. Well, anyway. So David, he just finally decided he had to confess what he did. Now, here's an inside view of a man getting right with God. Friends, have you ever done something wrong since you've been a Christian? Of course you have. You show me a perfect Christian, and I'll show you one that's in heaven. Because there is no such an animal. It's just like, beloved, there's no such a thing as a, as a perfect church. Because, see, you and I can belong to it, and we're not perfect. We're sinners saved by grace. Now, here's the bearing of a man's heart before, after an encounter with failure. It is also a psalm of the king. David is a leader, not only politically, spiritually, and even musically. Now, I want to bring something up quick, and I'm not a politician, trust me. But the other day, President Obama uh, did away with the, uh, the nation of prayer. Now, Truman did it, and, uh, and uh, Bush did it, but not him. He said he'd pray in private. Well, dear friends, I'll tell you, he's not God. And here's a sign I want to put on the back of my car. I haven't got it there yet, but I want to put, and President uh, Obama is our president, but Jesus is my Savior. It is a psalm with which we can identify because we also fail and we also fall. We shall focus on just one statement in his prayer. David had known the joy of salvation. Restore indicates that he possessed it before. So he had been born again. He knew the joy of knowing the Lord. And here he did. He, You see, he lost that walk. He lost that joy that, hey, friends, listen. You know yourself. There's times when you bow your head and you pray, and it seems like they hit a a wall. And that's because, you know, you've got to confess your sins to him and tell him that you've made a mistake. Friends, it's not easy to admit you're wrong. Oh, it's not easy for me. I've had to do it with my wife. I've had to tell her I was wrong. And, boy, that, that's, that takes humility. Whew! Yes, it does. But we all, we all make mistakes. We all do wrong. That's why uh, when I go to prison, I tell them that Jesus is a, is a God of the second chance. Now, some of those men and women are there for heinous crimes, and others are there for it's on your car or something like that. But, dear friends, if you do something the Bible says, if you confess your sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins. A search of the Psalms reveals that truth. Now, Psalms 9-1, I will praise thee. You know, when things are going bad, and yeah, boy, we do have bad things happen to us, you know what you need to do? Seriously, now try this. Let's suppose in the day and that you're about to lose your job, or you don't have enough money to pay your house payment, or, or whatever it might be, or your health is failing. You know what it would be good to do? Just sit down, shut your eyes. And think about the wonderful things that he did for you and has done for you. Think about that day that you asked Jesus to come into your heart. Hey, if you can't remember that day, you better check up because there's a good possibility you never met Jesus. You know, someone said, you know, Cecil, I don't have that feeling. You're not saved by feelings. You're saved when the Holy Spirit of God convicts you. Now, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned. When I was at that preacher's house the morning, I was lost and drunk. And I kept telling him, preacher, God doesn't love us. You're saved when the Holy Spirit of God draws your heart and convicts you. Now, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Listen. The one thing I will never forget when I was at that preacher's house the morning I was lost and drunk. And I kept telling him, Preacher, God doesn't love alcoholics. And he said, Yes, he does. And he quoted, For God so loved Cecil Moe that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. I said, I don't believe it. I said, for one thing, well, the reason I don't believe God loves me because he took my sister away from me by death. He took my mother away from me by death. He took my father away from me by death. He, uh, I was raised with a mean stepmother who used to lock me in the God loves me. He said, that's correct. Well, while he was telling me that, God's Holy Spirit was a tugging and a tugging, and I could feel it in my heart. Something wasn't right. I wasn't right with God. And I remember, and see, I've recognized God since I was four years old. <clears throat> I recognize God, but friends, you know, you can know about him and not know him. That's right. You can know all the things about him. The devil believes that and trembles. But when you know him, the Bible said this is written that you pass from death in their life. Psalm 21, 1. The king shall joy in thy strength. In Psalm 23, 5. My cup runneth over. Psalms 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. There's a good reason for this joy. Now remember, things are not going well tonight. You're having real heartaches and problems. Sit down and and then just think about what he's done for you. Then you'll praise him. And then you know what? The minute you start praising God for what he's done for you, things begin to happen in your heart. He wants you and I to be happy. You say, well, boy, howdy, if that's the truth, why am I always broke? Why? Have, look at me. I've been sick for all these years. And I've had heart attacks and got COPD and I've got diabetes, and I've had a cancer operation. Come on. But you know what? I just keep praising him. Keep on keeping on. And when I go to prison, and I look in the face of those men and those women, or if I go to the rescue mission, I see people who are empty, people that seemingly have no hope whatsoever. And then I go back to that morning that I went to Tom Baird's home, I had no peace, no joy. I was weeping till I had no more tears. And finally, God got through to me. Now, the Bible says the Lord came to seek and to save that which is lost. Now, if you're lost tonight, he's seeking you. He's looking for you. And he's going to be tugging at your heart tonight. You'll never be the same. If you're lost and you listen to this message and you reject him, you'll never be the same until you come to him as a little child. The joy of assurance of heaven. Oh, my stars, dear friends. You know, I know a good friend. In fact, I introduced her and her husband and her brother to Christ many, many, many years ago. And she just lost her beloved husband about four or five months ago. That girl is happy. Millie is one happy girl. You know what she's doing? She's working in the church. She's going out and she's helping people. And she's praying for people. She's praying for holy boldness. Oh, my stars. What a joy she must be to that church. And what a joy you can be to your church. If you get busy. And stand, get off in your premises and start standing on the promises. The joy of the presence of the Lord. You know what, friends? Every night, and I mean every morning when I... When I have my time with the Lord, I always ask him to bless me and my wife and to, to the prisons on Sunday. And then I always ask the Lord, Father, I pray that the presence of God is so strong that there will be tears of repentance as these men and women hear about the love of God. And God has never disappointed me. Always we see tears. In every service, we see people saved. Every service. Last, told you last Sunday, uh, two Sundays ago, 25 accepted Jesus. The joy of finding the answers to life. Friends, the greatest and the smartest and the most intelligent people are the Christians <clears throat> that seek the divine will of God. You're a rich person. If you know the will of God, and I've told so many people, I said, look, Everyone that's born again has one talent. Well, that's fine, but I'm not satisfied with one talent. 
I invested that talent, he'll give you another talent. You invest that, and he'll give you another talent. God wants you to be a talented person. Hey, and I've said this so many times, God is not looking for big shots. Uh, God is not looking for super spirituals. He's looking to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, who are making themselves available to be used of God. <clears throat> now, the joy is available to you through the gospel. Now, when you're hearing this today, you're hearing good news. You're hearing that Jesus has outstretched arms and says, Come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you peace. See, David had lost the joy of his salvation. Now, again, restore indicates that he does not have it right now. Oh, but, dear friends, David has a lot of company. Maybe tonight, dear friend, maybe you're one of those people that's lost the joy of your salvation. You say, well, what do I got to do? Well, very simple. Just what David did. Confess it. <coughs> and ask him to restore the joy of your salvation. But if you confess it, you're, what's the problem is? He will restore it to you. No, he won't give you back your salvation because he never took it away from you. He didn't ask him to restore his salvation. He said, restore the joy of his salvation. Many are filled with gloom who once were filled with glory. Many are burdened who were once blessed. Many are sour who once were filled with song. You know, dear friends, there is nothing sadder than a Christian who has become bitter of something that happened to him or her in their church. You know God can sweeten the bitter. Oh, he sure can. He sweetened the water there out there in the desert. It was bitter. But you know, what do you got to do? You got to come back. Confess your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive all your sins. Many are pouting who were once praising. Now, David, in the story of his sin, the affair with Bathsheba. Sin had robbed David of his joy. The song is gone. Many can remember a better day. Do you? Why, sure we can. But again, friends, sit down tonight. If you're going through some problems, and no doubt you are, something spiritual, physical, financial, whatever it might be, sit down and shut your eyes and say, Oh, God. Take me back to that time when I was a sinner, when I was a lost, hell-bound, hell-bound, doomed damn sinner. And Lord, take me through what you did for me that night. And remember, there he was on that cross with outstretched arms, with spikes in his hands and thorns in his head, bleeding. And you know what? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what he's saying to you tonight. You know, listen, friends, I know this sounds crazy. But every time that you don't witness for Jesus and don't tell people about Jesus, you're you're denying him. You know, I was telling someone the other day, I, I was over at the post office baiting some tapes out. And there was a long line of people in there. And I started witnessing to this lady, and she seemed to be... Well, first of all, I opened the conversation about talking about our Nugget basketball team. Now, sometimes you gotta you got to go around things to get to the time that you want to witness. So I started sharing Christ with her, and I told her about uh, going... That I was a, a volunteer prison chaplain, my wife and I, and we go to prison and all that. And I said, uh, my name is Cecil Moe. I said, let me write that down on a piece of paper. So I wrote it down in a piece of paper. I said, now, when you go back to your office, you just go to the... She said, I'm going to do it. I said, because you'll find out that I produced a movie against all... And I told her about uh, going, that I was a, a volunteer prison chaplain, my wife and I, and we go to prison and all that. And I said, uh, my name is Cecil Moe. I said, let me write that down on a piece of paper. So I wrote it down on a piece of paper. I said, now, when you go back to your office, you just go to the main line and pull that name up on your computer and see what happens. She said, I'm going to do it. I said, because you'll find out that I produced a movie against all hope. 
and that Michael Madsen starred in it. She said, Michael Madsen, the movie star? I said, yeah, this was the first movie he ever made. Oh, she was excited, so she was going back there. But friends, we need to witness. You know, you need to pray for holy boldness. If you're afraid, and I'm, I'm basically a coward, but I've led thousands of people to cry, but I'm still basically a coward. Yes, I am. See, we can't do it on our own. Don't try to witness in the flesh. You witness in the spirit. Now, David longed to have that joy of his salvation restored. Now, restore was part of his prayer to get back what he had lost. Not his salvation, but his joy, his happiness. David prays for joy to come back again. Well, what is the road back? Well, it is a road of remembering. It's a road of confession. It is a road of faith. Let me ask you, do you long for that joy again? Well, you can still have it. Oh, sure you can. Oh, my stars. I can remember the years that I used to preach revivals, and I preached revivals in Virginia, the Wallets Church there in Virginia. Oh, what a joy. What a godly man and a godly wife and sons. And and I remember the time we, we'd go out and uh, talk to people. I remember one time we went out, and, uh, and now an old alcoholic led him to Christ. And you know what? I Later I found out that that man uh, had courted his wife, took her flowers, bought her a refrigerator, new refrigerator and a stove. And uh, he, uh, we led him to the Lord, of course. And you know, the last time I heard, he was winning souls, and he was a real witness. Oh, friends, listen, you don't have to be an alcoholic to be used of God. But I'm so glad. Yes, I am. I'm glad I was an alcoholic because I was. I'm no more. Because it made me have compassion in my heart for other alcoholics and drug addicts. You know, <clears throat> Psalm 32 says, Another view of the same man. Blessed is a man whose transgressions is forgiven. Let me say, let me ask you, have you been forgiven? Your joy will return as you return to your Lord confessing your sins. Oh, beloved, listen to me, listen to me. If you're a Christian tonight and you're out of tune with God, God isn't happy because you're not happy. Now, he wants you to be a witness for him. And you can't, be, you can't be a witness for Jesus if you look like you've been baptized in pickle juice. No, you can't. Now, these people out of many are lost a goose in the grass. And they need somebody like you. You say, Cecil, I'm not very good looking. Well, who is? I'm not, I don't have a lot of money. Who does? But if you have God's Holy Spirit in your heart, he commands you to go out in the highways and the byways and bring them in. Listen, beloved, the reason our churches are dead today. Now, I'm telling you, and I love the churches, but the deal is many of our pastors have become discouraged. Many of our pastors are underpaid. Many of our pastors are, have been abused. I've been abused as a pastor. I've been abused as an evangelist, underpaid. I'd go preach revivals and I wouldn't get enough money to pay for my plane trip it back. Did it stop me? No, because I don't work for pay. I work for the joy and the call of God in my life. Well, friends, listen, let me ask you. You say, well, cease. Tell you what, you're convincing me. No, I'm not convincing you. God's Holy Spirit's going to convince you. And right now, if there's a big old tugging at your heart, that's him saying, child, let me come in. Let me change your life. I know that you have, you've got a broken heart. I know your wife left you. I know that your son was killed in Vietnam or Korea or wherever. But I want to change you. I want to wrap my arms of love around you. I want to give you, I want to write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. I want to take you to home to be with me. If that's your desire tonight, would you bow your head with me? And don't pray this unless you mean it. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll forgive my sins. Come into my heart, Lord, and save me tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, get on the phone and call 
401-871-8534. If you can't afford the call, please call Collect, and I'll accept the charge. 303-471-8534. I'm waiting for your call. friends for the past half hour your host has been evangelist cecil mo i want to thank you dear ones for listening tonight i have a special prayer will you pray for me and my wife and my health i'm i'm feeling stronger but oh i don't want to give up my prison ministries <clears throat> so you pray for our health <clears throat> and pray that these tapes and movies and books that we're sending out will help win people to christ Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good.